My career, I was lucky enough to build relationships with many good horses, and today I've come to see an old favourite in the Irish National Stud. Well, there's two of them here, but seeing as Limerick is around the corner, I've come to see Faheen, and I brought him with me. So, Patrick, we've gotten past Hurricane Fly and caught Faheen. I don't think Fly is overly happy. At least the girls are talking to him. But look, this lad arrived one point a point in 2011, and obviously arrived in close Sutton then. I don't remember him coming, but it was May 2013 before we got him on the track. Can you fill in the gap or the blanks or yeah. where he went? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he was obviously in, um, he was in training and he got a little setback. I think it was muscles behind or something. I remember he used to be in George's barn up near the Gallop um, and he, he missed all the spring festivals, but he was in and we finally got him out then in Punchestown in May before, well, technically it is the start of the new season, but before the, he went out on his holidays. And um, I think Rock the World might have been making the running with Kate Harrington. Went a, f a good gallop, and I turned in on this fella, and I was worried about Robbie McNamara on a Gignesan horse coming from off the pace, and gave him a squeeze and pushed him out all up the straight, and he won 20 lengths. And I think Willie didn't speak to me for about two weeks because he was after mining this horse for all year trying to get him right, and he said I shouldn't have took him off the bridle, but sure, it was like putting the foot down the Ferrari. I just got. Uh, got lost in the moment. It's funny, I remember that part of the story because he went back to Punchestown the following November for a maiden hurdle and we had loads of horses entered. It was two miles and six and we declared him. And I'm thinking, uh, he's loads of speed, like he doesn't need to go two six. Oh yeah, I know that, he says, but you won't be taking him off the bridle. <laughs> so he lined up in Punchestown, he won his maiden hurdle, don't let him off the bridle. My only instructions going out in the novice hurdle in Navamore, I don't care how you get on, don't come off the bridle. And I went out thinking, how am I supposed to win and not take him off the bridle? So he won in Navin, and then Willie sent him to Limerick at Christmas. I nearly, I nearly cried. I was in Leperstown thinking, this fella's going to Limerick. Emmett rode him. Were you in Limerick that day? No, I wasn't, us? I wasn't there, but I remember Emmett going down to ride him, and I think Emmett, at the time, the, the, the jockeying was coming to the end of its... Uh, I think the, the, the want for a dinner was, uh, <laughs> was overtaking his desire to be a jockey, and I think there is a story about maybe him having to use a safety pin to keep his jumpers together when he rode this fella, but... Um, yeah, they won. They won on the road anyway. I think he was keen all the way. Mikey Fogarty might have been annoying him on, on a Colin Murphy's, um, but he never came out of second gear. It's funny, like two six maiden hurdle, two and a half mile winners hurdle in Navin, three miles in Limerick at Christmas, and then we got to Cheltenham. And my memory of him running in the Ballymore was I couldn't get Willie on the phone. <laughs> We'd had a treble the day before. I couldn't get Willie on the phone and I headed into the ring to ride him. No instructions. I thought I was going to listen to the instructions anyway, but rocked in to ride him, uh, got him in the ring, I said, well, and he just kind of looks at me like, do you know what you do? I remember riding now, he was free as the wind in the Ballymore, but he bolted in, and then coming back to Punchestown, obviously Vatour had won the Supreme, this fellow won the Ballymore, and Hurricane was coming to the end of his reign, I suppose, he'd been beaten in the champion hurdle, one of them was going to have to go chasing, and I was so keen it was Vatour to go chasing. I thought chasing, Chances would be a, a plus to that tour, whereas I didn't think they were going to be a plus to this fella. And I wanted him to stay over hurdles. And Willie flip flopped in Punchestown. And this fella in the two mile, and that tour in the two and a half. And it was just some novice season when you look at it. Two, two and a half, two six, two five. Good ground, heavy ground. I think, you know, with a lot of the good horses, not all of them, but with a lot of the good horses, they're versatile, aren't they? And yeah. he was versatile. It didn't matter the ground, the trip. Um, you saw with Car Carter Star was similar, Tinker Creek's Gold Cup. Yeah. And my other, other abiding memory of him is after he won his first Christmas hurdle, he went to Ascot and he won, and then he won his Christmas hurdle, and Willie had him entered in the Red Mills, and he said, will we run him? And I said, like, why? What do you want to run him for? And he said, like, you have to make it the last couple of times, you might need experience in behind. I remember standing in the kitchen laughing, telling him, nah, can you make it in the champion hurdle too? Well, I remember you telling me at Christmas you were going to make it in the champion <laughs> yeah. hurdle, because uh, there was, that year there was nothing that was going to go on, but I have a very clear memory of you saying at Christmas time, you'd be making it in the champion hurdle with him. Then he won the champion hurdle and came back and I got him beaten in the Morgiana. Didn't make enough use of him, gave it to David. Well, David gave Nicholas a great ride, but he got beaten. Back to Kempton and then came his best performance, but the day I realised why Willie never wanted him off the bridle because when he bolted in at Leperstown, he missed 18 months. Yeah, he just, he, he was, not that he was fragile, but like all of them, they can miss, they can miss time and unfortunately, uh, the chassis and the engine didn't uh, always match up, but we got him back eventually. Yeah, he, well, I rode him in another champion hurdle, he wasn't good enough. I brought my leg, David won a three mile hurdle on him. 
he had a bit of a bit of an in and out time then. I retired and he went chasing. And I remember thinking, fences in him, I'm not sure. Paul won it on the first day. And then you go down on the second day and he went to Limerick for even though he won the champion hurdle, probably one of his most famous days. Yeah, I remember schooling him. I'd schooled him before uh, I think I was schooled him before he won his beginners. And he made a bad mistake. He nearly lost Paul at the ditch down the side. Mm. And then he wasn't maybe great at the last, the second last as well. Um, but I, I schooled him again before Limerick when I knew I was going to ride him. And I remember just thinking he's better being positive. He's better going forward. Um, so that was, I remember going down to Limerick and that was in my head. I was going to be positive down to every fence. But it's the only race I can really remember distinctly being nervous about. Uh, I've been looking at riding Gold Cups, Champion Hurdles. Why? Um, because what distinctly made you nervous because because of his age because it was a novice chase because of who he was and what it was um like i'd got you know i'd ridden duvan in the champion chase and it was fine that was a horse in his prime running champion chase he hadn't run a year but grand but and yet five minutes not he already had he you know with, he was at the end of his career and i just didn't want anything to go wrong and i just distinctly remember being nervous and you know you have a good ride you have a nervous energy fine but I, I just, I wasn't enjoying waiting around. I think I had a ride early in the card and had to wait around three hours and adjust, or two hours, and it wasn't enjoyable. I remember being in Kempton. I was working on the TV, and this lad on the screens got a bigger cheer than the King George winner. I can't remember what won the King George. <laughs> and this fella got a bigger cheer in Limerick. He went to Leperstown. Paul won them, lifted the roof off the stand, and then he bowed out at Cheltenham under Paul. You finished just in front of him on Mellon, and the boat went down to Sam Crow, but he's an, had an incredible career. He's had an incredible career, but you know, I think it's the ups and downs. He looked unbeatable. He was Fahey in the machine. Then Infallible, till I got him beaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then he got injured, he came back. You know, he, he pulled up that time in Leperstown. Then he got the bad fall in the three-mile hurdle. Looked, looked like it could oh. be game over. Um, he got up from that. He came over from the stand. He wanted to be on his back, watch him disappear underneath you. I thought it was game over. Um, and then, you know, to reinvent himself at 12, 11 and 12 uh, as the chaser. And those two days, I think those two days in Punchestown, or in Leperstown and in Limerick, uh, you know, they, there's always big days when champions win. Those days when an old champion comes back and, and takes the stage again, they don't always happen. So they Look, were very you special. and I were lucky enough to ride him, so was Paul. And John Codd rode him every day. He was a huge part of this horse's career as well. John was. John was our, you know, was one of our head men. Uh, looked after him like he was a kid. Like John came up from Wexford an hour every day. John went over, missed Christmas with his kids to go over to Kempton with him. Twice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, without John Codd now, the Faheen story would be very different. He's living a happy life now. He's uh, in a field full of stars and much deserved. Is he the biggest one? Mm, he's the newest one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.